Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be using the FET simulation, Energy Skate Park Basics, in order to look into conservation of energy. Now, here I have a skater who I can lift up and place on that track. But before I do, I'm going to click these two options in order to look at the energy that they possess. If I lift them up, you can see in the bar chart they're gaining potential energy. Remember, potential energy is EP is MGH. M is the mass, in this case the mass of the skater. G is gravitational field strength, 9.8 newtons per kilogram on Earth. And H is, of course, their height. So if I slow them down in a second and then stop them at maximum height, that is where they would possess all potential energy. And of course, you can see the, the pie chart is all blue, all potential. And the same we can see here on the bar chart. If I start them again, as they move downwards, you can see they're transferring that potential energy to kinetic energy. And of course, at the lowest point, roughly there, that's all kinetic energy. So this is obviously where they're move, moving at the fastest. I can actually click here and look at their speed. As they move up, of course, they're slowing down, transferring kinetic energy to potential energy, and again at maximum height. That's where they have all potential energy, no kinetic energy. What is important though, and I'll start this again, if you look at the bar chart, the total energy at all times is the same. So when we add the kinetic plus potential, we always get the same value. Now, the one thing to notice about this screen is this doesn't include friction but it does in the second screen. So I'm gonna to go to that one. And in fact, it's labeled friction. This time, if I place this person here on the track and let them go, you'll see that they're not reaching, each time they go to the maximum height, either side of the slope, they're reaching a lower and lower height. Now, why that is, we can actually see, if we click the same two options and look at the pie chart, what's actually happening, if I start them again, there's where they have the maximum potential energy, but moving down, and I'll click slow motion again, moving downwards, they're not just transferring that potential energy to kinetic. Remember, there's friction in the wheels. There's obviously friction in the bearings of the wheels and between the surface of the wheels and the ground. So that, of course, the friction causes heating. As, of course, this person's moving down the hill, they're transferring potential energy into kinetic energy but also some heat. And therefore, of course, since the kinetic energy at the bottom of the slope isn't equal to the potential energy at the top, then when they go back up, they won't reach the same height. So this is more like what would actually happen in real life. Now, I'm gonna show you the last screen. This is the one that I like the most because we can actually make our own track. So I'm not the best track maker in the world, but We'll give this a go. Now, when you're doing this, what you do need to remember is that this connector here has to go on the end of that one there. And I think I'll make a loop the loop as well at some point. Move this up. There are other things you need to know about this simulation. Over here in the right hand side, you can choose that when they go upside down, that they stay attached to the track or they can also fall away from it. Now, don't worry, because no one actually gets hurt in this. I'll have this go up here to maximum height, and we'll let the person go from there and see if they can make it round here. Only just, excellent. Of course, if they go off screen, we can then start again, but I think I'll just make that part higher again, and then start them off again. Oh. That didn't work, so I'll lift them up and let them go. Now, the only problem here, even though this part here on the left-hand side is lower than the part on the right-hand side, what has happened is they have, obviously, they've lost, or transferred, I should say, transferred some of that potential energy to heat energy. So that has meant that they've not managed to reach the same maximum height. Now, what I'll do is I'll stop here, and this is something you'll actually see in an actual roller coaster that every time the roller coaster goes up it'll be to a lower height than the previous maximum height because of course as it's moving round it is of course a uh, transferring energy from potential to heat if there was no transfer of energy from potential to heat then you could just go up to the same height 
back down up to the same height again. But that's not the case in real life. Let's try and see if they can make it round now. Only just. Wonderful. Now, as I said, I can also click this option so that once they go upside down, I would imagine they'll fall away. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there you go. That's more like what would actually happen in real life. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, because obviously the main thing is this to try and encourage you to use this simulation yourself. And of course, as I said, you can also look at the speed, of course, that the skater's moving. You can look at a grid which tells you the height. Unfortunately, we don't know their mass. So you can't actually calculate from, say, the height and the mass. We can't work at the potential energy. And of course, we can't work at the kinetic energy, even though we know their speed, we can't use the equation for kinetic energy to work at EK is half mv squared. But a lot of fun in this simulation. Give it a try yourself. And of course, if you have any questions, then you can ask them in the comment section. That's us for now, though. We'll see you later.